we are focusing on the outside. But as an umma, it's also important to look at our internal struggles. Um, if we don't address our internal issues, we will lack the, the building blocks and the core strength to address the challenges beyond our doorsteps. So tonight, we are fortunate to have with us as Dr. Samira Ahmed. She will be addressing the importance of mental and emotional health, key building blocks for our strength and stability as a community. I have the privilege of inviting Ustada Tahira Ahmed to the podium for a brief Quran recitation. Ustada Tahira is an international karya. She's a chaplain at Northwestern University and a long-standing contributor to the MCC community. Without further ado, Ustada, please welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, I will be reciting from the last part of Surah Baqarah. And then I will share just a few why I chose these verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem.
Because when I was growing up, I went to MCC full-time school. I graduated from the school, believe it or not. And every year in Islamic studies about Surah Baqarah. And in particular, we would talk about the story of Adam salam and Hawa salam and Shaitan. And the whole story of how Adam salam was created. And that Allah Ta'ala created him and then asked Shaitan to bow to him. And as a child at MEC, I was always really excited for that time of that story. And I'd be like, yes, we're reading Surah Baqarah, we're going to talk about this story. And instead of translating, because of the sake of time, I wanted to share with you a quick piece about how it's in part in my life at MEC. So every time we would talk about this story, the teachers at MEC would say, okay, Shaitan, he does not bow to Adam and him leave heaven because of it, right? So Shaitan basically says to Allah Ta'ala, I'm going to promise you one thing. Now we get so excited as a child at MEC when that part would come in the story. Shaitan promised God one thing. He, he gives him an oath. Does anyone know what that promise is? He promises God one thing in Surah Baqarah. Just one thing. He says, I'm going to show you God that these people are not going to be amongst the Shakirin. They're not going to be grateful. They're not going to show you gratitude. So when he leaves, everybody knows the story, so I'm going to keep it short for the sake of time. He leaves heaven. Adam and Adam Ali Salam and Hawa Ali Salam are both in heaven. And of course, as you know, they make that mistake. And how do they make that mistake? Because Shaitan does something called waswasa. He whispers. Now. I know some of you have heard this story many, many times, but what I want to point out to you is that his whispers penetrate through the walls of a place called heaven. As a child, I never thought about that, but as, as an adult, I do now. The whispers of Shaitan are so strong that God allows those whispers to penetrate through a place called heaven, which we all think is a very safe place, right? We think of heaven and we think it's going to be, you know, spectacular, but even the walls of heaven could not hold through, right? The whispers of Shaitan penetrate through heaven and get to Shaitan or get to Adam Ali Salam. At which point, right, he makes that mistake and then they're both cast to what we call the, the world now. Shaitan says to God, I'm going to show you that they're not going to be grateful. And that is his ultimate promise. But the oath, the ahad that the human beings take is that we are going to show Allah Ta'ala that we're going to be grateful to Him and continue to return to Him. So Surah Baqarah to me is absolutely amazing and there's a psychologist in the room who's going to be speaking to us tonight. I find this, this story so amazing, Dr. Samira, because Shaitan's promise is what the psychologists tell us is the number one thing that we should be doing 
to keep resiliency in our lives, which is number one Harvard study says show gratitude. Tonight we have gathered here today to show gratitude. Shaitan's promise to God in Surah Baqarah is, I'm gonna show you that these people you created are not gonna show you gratitude. So social, psychologist, so social psychologists as well as neuroscientists tell us today that the way in which human, the human race has continued to stay resilient and continue to stay on path is because they show gratitude. In fact, serotonin and dopamine is released in our body when we show gratitude. In fact, cortisol levels are decreased because when, when we have stress, cortisol is that something that's released in our bodies. But when we show gratitude, that's actually decreased. Tonight, I pray that this space we use it to show gratitude. We return, inshallah, the favor of the MCC full-time academy as well as the entire institution that I've been a part of. So I wanted to share with you that note about Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah is a prayer that we all do that tonight. JazakAllah khair. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. In the spirit of gratitude, thank you, Salah Dahara, for your rescue here. Thank you so much for coming um, on this lovely Sunday night. Um, we have people wearing presages. So if you see one person, they are either a volunteer or a board member or a committee chair. So they're people in leadership positions. So please acknowledge them, nod at them, smile at them, and thank, say thank you to them. So everybody here was wearing, there's a lot of people who are 70, we make 70 presages. So uh, we're very happy, very fortunate to have all these love, great volunteers in different leadership positions. So I will. Uh, wrap up with this um, and uh, thank you Rasha for uh, being our MC tonight and we have a really good program so look forward to it thank you okay it's now my pleasure to invite our outgoing president to the stage Dr. Sarwar Nasser um, Dr. Sarwar Nasser has been serving us for the last four years but prior to his, his appointment as our president, uh, he's been actually serving the community since 1992 as a board member, as chairman of the full-time school, and department head of the Sunday school, to name just a few. Um, he's done all this in addition to his full-time work as an academic scientist. Thank you, Dr. Nasser. as alaikum, everyone. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before I start something, I want to mention that whenever we have this kind of gathering, some political figures are aspirant political figures. They do come and they want to speak to the audience, which is a wonderful thing. So, as we have done in the past, also, inshallah, we will be doing today also. But we request the um, um, the candidates or whoever they are to speak very briefly and do not ask for endorsement. We cannot endorse anyone. But we, you are welcome. Um, you can check with uh, our MC and you will be given time. I remember first time when I joined this community, President Obama, who was running for the Senate at that time, he came to our Eid gathering and he said, my name is Barack Hussein Obama. And everyone clapped. He was not a Muslim, but he pretended perhaps on that day <laughs> to get the votes for all the Muslims. So I'm just telling the history of MCC, Alhamdulillah, we welcome everyone, but we do not endorse anyone. Now, having said that, let me come back to, I always start with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, I, I want you to be generous when we thank different people, not just like we are doing like that. Be generous and be powerful. So first of all, I want to thank our guests and dignitaries of Martin Grove and Skokie. Let's thank them, please. In fact, I want them to stand up so that we can go hurriedly. Thank you. Next, we have different organizations who are supporting us today. We have CIOGC, NATE, Radio Islam, Sound Vision, Islamic Foundation North, Helping Hand, Ikna Relief, and there are many others. If they are there, they can stand up and we will give a big applause to them. 
Next we have, let's come to back to our MCC. All the current and past board members of MCC, please stand up. We want to appreciate you if you are here. Let's clap. Give them a hand. There are some presidents, past presidents, also board members, and there are some um, past and some current ones. Next, I have on my list all the committee members and chairs. If they are here, please stand up. Committee chairs and committee members, please stand up. These, this is my cabinet. I call that as a cabinet. They are the ones who are running the show. They are running whole MCC, MEC, all the schools. They are the ones. They are committee chairs, committee uh, council chairs, council members, committee members, teachers, volunteers. And then we have MCC employees. If they are here, please stand up and let's give a big hand to them. Okay, now there's one very important group of people. We call them Musallis. They are silent helpers of MCC. Please stand up. All the Musallis who are here, they may not be part of a committee, but they are the ones who are decorating our masajid. Without them, our masajid will be like a masjid -e zarar You know, Muslims, we all know masjid -e zarar If they are not there, our masajid will be like that, empty. So let's give a hand to them also. And then we have the donors and all the other guests who are here today. Let's give a hand to them also. Now after that, I because I was given only a few minutes, I am already being told I am the outgoing president. Um, when we don't know who will be the next president, so, so I have to be brief. After spending four years, um, and in the past I have been talking about different programs, we brought uh, in a new uh, full-time imam, we brought in different office associates, youth coordinators, getting Safety Island, Zebra Crossing at MCC, improving upon MCC office and all the other facilities including MCC Women Lounge and other things. I thought today I will just focus on the outreach programs our committee and our MCC has been doing. And that thank go to President Donald Trump. It's because of him we woke up. We woke up and then we started talking to other people and our friends and our other, other community members, they came to us and they started helping us. So I will start with, can we start? Okay. I can't even see. Is there a other mic I can take? I have to be able to see that. What? All right, um, I will be talking from here. So, um, you see this uh, different slides. The first one on the top, that is the first one when President Donald Trump um, had his uh, executive order and we were about to have our program at MEC with 200 people at the most and then Sister Dilna started calling me in the morning that more people are coming, can we have 300? I said okay. Then she said can we have 400? I said okay. Then she said can we have 500 and outside and it was not only raining, it was snowing on that day. I said, well, we cannot do outside, we will try to accommodate. Can you imagine more than 1,500 people showed up in favor of Muslims? So that is the people are walking. The second slide is uh, uh, people from Louisiana. They came to visit us. And that's the second slide. Third slide is again some students, they came um, in, in supporting us. 
So you can see a sea of people and the corner, our Imam is explaining to different our friends. Um, and then uh, in the corner, left hand side, that's again the outreach, different people. They just, um, um, uh, again, that's the part of outreach. I'm going fast. Um, now this is Open Mosque Day. We had um, at um, MEC and MCC also and we got big gathering there also we got more than thousand people and it was inside the mosque and people were really clapping they were energized that mashallah um, um, i mean this was all against president trump um, and then different programs ramadan aftari interfaith i don't want to go into much detail you see these on the right side eid mubarak these cards were given by, by our non-muslim friends from different churches, from different synagogues, they wrote for us uh, those Eid cards. Um, Eid Salat on the left side and then on right side we did this time Eid celebration right in the masjid where, where we pray. We put the, those uh, bouncy um, rites in there for the kids. Now, our board has approved for high school also and that inshallah will be starting in 2018, August, September of 2018. Um, board approved and uh, MCC Council and MCC Education Development um, is working on that. Now, having said that, this is the uh, mezzanine project. If you see on the extreme left, top left, People are praying in the hallway. There was not enough space inside the masjid. So there was a conception in the year 2000 to build the balcony. So we went ahead and we, we did work on that. You see different stages on the top when it was being built. Um, on the left hand side corner, bottom one, that was our goal. And goal was being filled every day. And then we had inauguration day where women, they inaugurated that with Alderman Lerino, who is our big supporter also, and we are a big supporter of her. And this is the new me mezzanine which is completed. Two different views of that, looks beautiful. People who have been praying there, they are appreciating. This one, uh, I just wanted to mention that because of again Donald Trump, we went to different different ways, and that's one of the Muslim media people we invited, and we had a nice panel uh, from AP, from uh, um, Chicago Tribune, from Chicago Sun Times, and different places. They were all our own product, so that was a wonderful program, and then other programs on the side also. Again, different programs, I don't want to go into detail. This one, I want to show you, we had a program that what should you do if an active shooter comes to your place? How should you defend yourself? So we invited FBI, we inside, um, invited Chicago police, and we invited a SWAT team member also. On the right side, um, we have some, our friends here, I think it was the first time MCC, and not only first time MCC, but in village of Martin Grove, it was the first time that a candidate forum was arranged. All the candidates um, were invited for the mayor and for the board members and for the other positions. All were given oppor equal opportunity and they spoke very heavily. So that was a wonderful program I just wanted to mention. Now this one, um, brother, I need your help. If you can put that. Is there a sound? This was the police uh, department. They came in our month of Ramadan inside MCC and they brought all of their
right here. Okay, very supportive. Want the same thing every community wants. The same thing that we want. Uh, quality of life to be good. Uh, do their job. Send their kids to school. Everything that we want. This community uh, envisions, wants, and reveres. So I thank you for that. <laughs> Please know that we are here for you. After I, um, uh, we dismiss the officer, we get a chance to meet, meet all of you and to get to know the officers. But we are here for you, as we are for every community. But I, I want to thank you again from my heart for your support and for everything. <laughs> People never hear about it, and we do. I hear about it. You do for not just for your community, but you open up the mosque for other communities. So I, I, I really, really uh, thank you for that, and 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 uh, acknowledge you for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. This is the commander, uh, police commander um, in Chicago area, and they came in Ramadan. They were like 25. All the policemen, they came and they wanted to tell us that they care about us and we care about them. So I just wanted to mention to um, now I want uh, my wife to stand up, please, please stand up. As um, Rasha also told, I'm the outgoing, perhaps I am not the outgoing, she is the outgoing because she has been behind me all the time for these four years in a dignified manner. She never asked for any position. She never asked for anything. Silently, she helped me to be patient and to listen all the criticism and all the appreciation also. So I request you to applaud her. And thank you very much. All I am saying today that perhaps this is the last time on the podium I will be asking you to empty your pockets before you go home. If you didn't bring the check or cash, you have your credit cards. I'm sure you have pledge forms on your tables. Pledge something. One dollar, ten dollars, twenty dollars, anything. We don't have any fixed goal, but MCC is your organization and I will not be asking you again in near future, inshallah. So, please be generous and try to donate as much as you can. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Dr. Nasser. It's uh, clearly a testament to your energy and your enthusiasm to see what all you accomplished during your tenure over four years. And although I said outgoing, I know you're going to continue to be a pivotal part of the community. So thank you again, Dr. Nasser. A big round of applause for him. <laughs> I now have the honor of introducing Imam Amgera. Uh, we are very, very fortunate to call our own. He holds three master's degrees and is also in pursuit of his PhD in Islamic studies. Um, in addition to his tremendous knowledge base, his extreme affability, approachability, and equanimity have made him beloved to our entire community. Without further ado, Imam Amgera. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I was given five minutes, but I'm going to try to keep it less than five minutes because we have a program to run and uh, we started a bit late. So dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam and also our non-Muslim guests, I want to share just some advice for myself and all of us about the importance of volunteering for our organization. That a few years ago in a small rural town in Oregon, USA, a teenage boy died in a drowning accident. <laughs> In all likelihood, his death could have been prevented if an ambulance and trained medical personnel had been available. However, the small town was too poor to afford these services. The boy's mother grieved, naturally, for the loss of her son, but she also transformed her grief into a service to her community. While she could not regain her son, she worked to prevent a similar tragedy. This woman trained and became an emergency medical technician. After completing her training, she raised money to purchase an ambulance and train volunteers to help her. It is estimated that this volunteer ambulance service has saved the lives of over 100 people that might have died, as her son did, 
due to the lack of emergency care. When interviewed, this woman said, it's easier to forget your own laws when you are busy helping others. So dear respect to brothers and sisters in Islam, the importance of volunteerism for non-profit organizations, it cannot be emphasized enough. Even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before he became a prophet, he was volunteering. He didn't need religion to motivate him and to tell him that you need to give back to your community. We see that on the day that the Prophet وسلم, was chosen as a prophet, he came to his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha and then he started talking to her and she consoled him and she praised him that you're helping the poor, those who are jobless, you're helping them find a job. The widows of orphans, you're taking care of them. You're making your utmost effort to provide sustenance and food to them. So this he was doing even before he was a prophet. So dear respect to brothers and sisters, it is so vital, it is so important that we spend our time, our resources in making our organizations into better organizations. You know, sometimes people complain, come and complain that that volunteer of your organization, he's like this and he's like that. And we admit it. But the problem is, and the issue is that if you are smart, you are educated, if you don't step up, then we just have to accept whichever volunteers we have in front of us. So that's why it's so vital, it's so important that uh, we volunteer. And we live in a country which is very different from other countries. That the United States, it's the most advanced country in philanthropy and in terms of percentage of income given to charities and average numbers of hours given for volunteering. Americans spent 8 billion hours giving back to their communities in 2011. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we only have one life in this world. How long we have left, none of us knows. But what we do with our life, that is in our control. What we do with our wealth, that is in our control. So I urge you today that as you are here, continue donating towards your organization. It is you who has made this organization where it has reached till now. On Fridays in three MCC facilities, we have over 3,000 people performing Juma prayers. Our full-time school has more than 630 students. More than 1,000 students benefit from MCC programs through your donations every single week. And, and when you donate to your organization, then we can get the best of employees, the best of Imams and best of others. And if we care about our religion, if we care about our faith, and if we care about our progeny, we need to donate towards our organization so that we can get the best of employees. Because it has never been harder, it has never been more difficult for youth today than in the history of the world than to lead a religious lifestyle. So much effort is being made online and other places to take kids away from religion. You know, let me end with a story a few days ago, a few weeks ago, the MEC Sunday School Administration, they told me that the students had a few questions and they weren't comfortable answering the questions of the students. So they said that, are you willing to come and sit down with them and answer their questions? So I said, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. I was expecting them to have, you know, three, four, five, ten questions. And then about well, three, four days ago, I got an email, and in the email, in the email, there were 116 questions. 116 questions, eighth, ninth, and tenth graders asked me, and I'm, I'm there like, you know, saying to myself, oh my God, what, what did I get myself into? You know, my pasgaya. You know, what did I agree to? But then I realized that this is part of my volunteerism. One is I'm an employee, but the other is that it's going to take so many hours for me to, uh, you know, bring together the advice for the youth and, and, and answer their questions and convince them. So dear respect to brothers and sisters in Islam, please continue to donate towards your organization because it is through your organization that this organization has been running for over 48 years. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, Imam Mangera. Um, as Dr. Nasser alluded to, we have two young female members in our community who are running for office. Although MCC does not endorse them, we do want to give them an opportunity to speak about themselves. So first, I have the privilege of inviting Bushra Amiwala to the stage. Um, Bushra. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Asalaamu As Alaikum. My name is Bushra Amiwala. I'm currently a sophomore. I'm majoring in marketing with a double minor in community service studies and public policy studies. 
I used to be a member of MCC's youth group and founded a group called Chai and Chat, a group where college students can contemporary issues and how they affect us as Muslims. And I'm also a member of MCC's Interfaith and Outreach Committee. Although I never went to MCC, this community has become a part of me. And I'm here today to share some of my work that I am doing university. So I grew up in an underprivileged area in Rogers Park, and it wasn't until I moved to the diverse village of Skokie at the age of nine where I realized the disparity between education systems, and I learned what school should actually be like. I learned that there shouldn't be swear words, realized what it felt like to have a teacher notice when you don't submit a homework assignment. Within a year of being in Skokie, I was placed in honors level courses and eventually able to attend one of the top 10 public high schools in the state of Illinois and graduate with a 4.0 GPA. My move to Skokie was a rebirth moment for chance at life and a first chance at success. The disparity between my earlier experiences has stuck with me and now become a driving principle in my life as I've always wanted to fix the core schooling that I would have internalized. And I thought the only way to change the system was by becoming a teacher myself. However, after speaking to many educators who had the same goal in mind, I realized that this is nearly impossible. Thus came my idea of tax-free learning. Tax-free learning is an initiative that hopes to step apart from the various district lines that make up of the funding a school receives and using various resources to help give students the tools for success needed. For example, we teach them how to build a resume, how to give an interview, and we also, um, sorry, and how to tackle difficult standardized test questions because unfortunately that is the harsh reality of what will predict their future. There are three ways to get involved with tax-free learning. You can enroll your child in our program, which will help cover the cost for a CPS student as well. Um, you can sponsor students to participate in our program, or you can apply to be a teacher in the classroom. CPS teachers are often overworked and could really use the extra set of hands. Now my goal here today was not to convince you all the importance of education, as your presence here today means you are already aware of it. It was to show you the various systemic barriers that hold people back and how the root cause to solve all of this is education. I was able to call university social enterprise competition and was the youngest person to ever win first place. And now, what was an idea a couple weeks ago is becoming a reality. So I'm asking all of you to join me in unlocking the doors for success for the next generation of leaders, doctors, and perhaps even MCC board members. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sher Muhammad Rajput. I am very proud to be product of MCC. And I'm more proud, you don't know how big an honor and privilege for me to invite second generation. She grew up in my hands. I, you don't know, this is the biggest event for me in this century. Our children are brave. She is a Bahadur. She's brave. She has the guts to stand up uh, with the maker. So please take a lesson from her. All of you, my children, please run for state. Run for your schools. We, we can, uh, you know, we are seven million Muslims. When I came here, there was no Muslim at all. You couldn't hit a Muslim. Now, you don't even have to throw a stone. <laughs> Samina, you don't know how proud I am. I know you, your mother, I know your grandfather. <laughs> so please, follow her. You don't know what a pleasure, what an honor. So I suggest one thing, one thing. If all of us are here, help her, I'm not diluting the fundraising efforts of MCC. <laughs> MCC, MCC is my home. I, I grew up, my children grew up. But I have one request for you. If all of us uh, can put up maybe $50 or $100 per, per, per family, she would win because she needs the money. She's running against the incumbent who is a congressman 
I mean, you don't know how, how, what a big deal it is to run for U.S. Congress. She is not running for alderman. Abaya Bawar ran for uh, alderman. She's not running for state. She is running for U.S. Congress. Oh my God! I mean, I will. Uh, we will all pray on Juma for her victory. For her victory. Okay, here is a hundred dollar of my money for Samina. So please, before you go, put something for Samina. But if not, Samina, announce how I can mail it to you. Okay. Okay. If you can, hundred ten fifty by me. Shukriya, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. You give me opportunity uh, to speak. Thank you, Veta. It's uh, hard to follow up on the heels of that, but I'll is a graduate of Northwestern, a product of MCC Sunday School. Her parents started MCC, Ketzi. Um, her accomplishments are too numerous for me to list. We'll be here all night long, but let me just allude to a few. Recently, she was elected to a 2017 National Leadership Academy Fellow by the Asian Pacific American Institute. Um, she's been praised for her extensive history of leadership and service to her community in the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago, Leader. Um, without further ado, Samina. Oh, that's, that's a really huge build-up. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I just want everyone to acknowledge my parents who are in the audience, Ali and Ada the Mustafa, who are here. My father came here in 62, actually. And so we used to hear from have your programs. You can look at the logo on your program. My father designed that. So you can uh, acknowledge him for his talent. <laughs> Very proud. And I'm also really proud to be here on this night in particular because my cousin, Anjum Ali, is going to be receiving an award. <laughs> so I'm very proud to be. Um, yeah, I was, I was actually at, at Kedzie. That's another way to say that I'm old. Um, I was at Kedzie, and then I moved to Elston and graduated from MCC and actually um, was a teaching assistant here um, at MCC school after I graduated. But uh, the most important thing I want to convey to all of you is I'm running. I am challenging an incumbent in the 5th Congressional District. I am challenging Mike Quigley. Um, but what I really want to leave all of you with is the importance of, of showing up, of being engaged. Every time we vote, we lend our power to elected officials. Every time we don't vote, we surrender our power. When we vote again, we can reclaim our power and use it to rebuild our party and our democracy. That is imperative. It is up to us. We are part of this community. We are, we are Americans. Let anyone, don't let Roy Moore, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, or any of these people tell us we are not Americans. We are Americans, and we are part of this country, and we need to be part of the leadership of this country. Thank you very much. Anjum Ali and Laura Frisch as the, our MCC award recipients. Um, Anjum Ali, if you could please make your way to the stage. So amazing people work quietly and diligently behind the scenes to help bring our Muslim community center to life. So one of these people is Anjum Ali. Um, Andrew holds a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from UIC, and she is notably a lifelong Islamic studies scholar. She currently works and serves on the Women's Committee and the Interfaith Outreach Committee at MCC. A generator and is one of the first to take an active role in any project. Um, she builds interfaith understanding as well as educates her community. Apart from working at MCC, she also participates in Soul, Soul Space, excuse me, this is an interfaith organization which promotes unity and diversity amongst women of many different backgrounds and faiths. Apart from serving at MCC, she's also Relations Commission and the Family Awareness Network of New Trier. Uh, without further ado, Anjumali. <sighs> okay, hustle like everybody. Um, thank you very much to the MCC board and um, the organizers of this event. Um, you know, it's hard to look at literally a room full of MCC volunteers and supporters 
and pretend that I deserve this any more than you do. Um, so many people, mashallah, in this room, you know, deserve this award. If I went table by table, I could point them out. Um, truthfully, though, um, I do appreciate this acknowledgement, uh, but nothing I do at MCC is I do by myself. There's a whole team that I work with at, in the Interfaith and Outreach Committee and the Women's Committee, um, so there are really many people who own a share of this award. Um, the first person I wanted to mention was the first chairperson I worked for, which is Brother Akhtar Sadiq. I don't know if he's here. Well, he is so dedicated to the outreach committee for so many years, and he encourages our team to run with any idea we have, but at the same time, he's so reliable and so present whenever we need help. Um, from day one, I've been working with uh, Sister Dilnas Warayat and Noshina Rahman and Anissa Laliwala, and there's so many more that um, I'm sorry I'm not naming, but they deserve it too. The MVP award <laughs> goes actually to someone who I think, mashallah, is on every committee on MCC, in MCC. Um, let's just say this person, if the Energizer Bunny, Bunny was a persistent Indian woman, she would be named Atiya Usman. <laughs> I never knew what she did before. Now I really have to thank um, Dr. Nasser and Imam Nazim Mangera. They say yes to everything that we ask of them, mashallah. And so jazakumallah khair to all of these people um, and their families because we know the families support everyone. Speaking of families, um, I, I grew up in a family that gave. I married into a, and gave and gave. Um, you might remember my in-laws, I have to mention uh, Dr. Amir Ali and Mary Ali. May Allah shower his mercy on them. Together they role modeled how an entire family can serve Allah by serving other people. Um, every single one of their kids, mashallah, Dawood, Nilifer, Amina, Omar, they all make serving others a priority in their lives. Um, even my girl, these genes, um, by the mercy of Allah, both of my daughters, they have talents that I wish I had. And they use them even as busy students, mashallah. Um, and then there's my mom, Aisha Sultana Ali. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, mashallah, she is a person who, at least in my lifetime, has not gone a single day without helping somebody, either in person or on the phone, now through email. <laughs> um, so Ami, I, I still hope to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> uh, last but not least, um, besides, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, I couldn't do anything I do at MCC or anywhere else without the support of my husband, Dawood Ali. Um, years ago, Dawood told me I could do anything I want. Um, and since then, he has solely provided for the family and let me do anything I want. Um, the only thing that ever made sense to me really was, besides parenting, was volunteering and service. That's the only thing that seemed meaningful to me. And so he's carried that burden of providing for our family ever since. And I know that that's kind of expected of Muslim men, but we know that's not the reality for everyone. So while I support the work he does, he definitely supports anything that I do. One last thing, and then I will leave you. Um, my buddy, Noshina, wherever she is, she made a really good point recently, and I thought about volunteering, I thought we, I had to share. Um, you know, we're all super busy, our kids are super busy, and yet we still volunteer in all kinds of places and all kinds of good deeds. But serving in the masjid, particularly, is important, and it should be a priority. Even if it's for one day, even if it's for one event, try to make some time to give to MCC because if you really think about it, even when we don't go to MCC, MCC is there for us. Um, and that's why I started to give back and I highly encourage all of you to do so. Thank you so much for this award. Anjum, thank you. You and your family leave big shoes for the rest of us to fill. So, um, as Muslim Americans, we live in an age where we don't take our friendships for granted. And so, we are incredibly excited to honor one of our very dear friends, Miss Laura Frisch. Laura, if you could make your way to the stage, please.
Laura has been a friend and neighbor to the MEC community, and she exemplifies what it means to say, love thy neighbor. Um, anytime the community has faced hardship, they been there for us. Um, whether it's been to organize a solidarity visual in the face of rampant Islamophobia, or to encourage our rights to build a mosque, she's been a longtime interfaith participant and friend. Um, and she has brought our congregation, her Hebrew congregation, to our interfaith events on many, many occasions. Um, in, in addition to being a goodwill ambassador to us, she has been an integral part of the Mordens Include, being a coach for the Science Olympiad, uh, teaching for the Niles Township District of Special Education, and volunteering for Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. There's literally 15 other things on there I couldn't even get to. She's that special. Thank you so much, Laura. I just wanted to go on the heels of um, what uh, <clears throat> what Usada had about gratitude um, and about being thankful. Um, I'm I'm thanking you for this reward, but really I'm thanking you for being our neighbors and for making our community what it is in Morton Grove. Um, it would absolutely not be the same place, and we would not have moved there if it weren't for the. Um, Muslim community. First, um, when we first looked at houses, uh, as a teacher, to me, the most important thing was school. And um, not only was I impressed that there was a school at the end of our school, a Muslim school at the end of our street, but when I went to the public school, um, the principal there I gave me a short tour, and one of the things that stuck out to me was there was a bulletin board there, and the bulletin board was for the children to learn about different religions, and how can you teach about religion in public school, you're not allowed to, but they had creatively put upon themselves, and they had a board filled with different architecture from all the different religions in the world. They had um, mosques, they had the high temples, they had synagogues, they had churches, um, Notre Dame. They, they had an ability to show us that we are all connected for so many different reasons in so many different ways. Um, but really, the main way we're connected, we're all human beings. And you know, when, when one of us is hurt, we are all hurt. Um, when we lose one life, we lose a world. And I just, I can never see that happen around our neighborhood. Um, I want to say, as far as being involved in the community, um, I learned that from my parents. Um, my dad is one of those people who is an energizer bunny, just like you are, and he, <laughs> he never stops, um, and he is always involved, and if somebody needs help, he helps them. Um, he has a good friend, Henry, who came to his door one time um, asking for money in his office, and my dad said, I have a few jobs if you could do that, and my dad and Henry have been friends ever since, and my dad's 84 and Henry's in his 70s, and um, I just learned that from my father. My mother was the same way. Every holiday we had at home, she would have someone there that I had never met, um, someone she met that needed a place to be at a holiday, um, needed help getting a job or something like that. Um, I obviously want to thank the Almighty. <laughs> um, everything happens under that, but um, I want to thank my husband. I never get to thank him enough. I like kids. I drive him everywhere, but um, my son is becoming a bar mitzvah uh, this November. And when we looked to do a mitzvah project for him, uh, we did find that he had a tough time. And he said, Mom, you know, we do mitzvah projects all the time in our family. <laughs> um, and we're always doing something to make the world a little better. And I think everyone does. And I think, you know, we have the moment. Um, Imam really brought it home to me when he was speaking this evening, uh, saying that we all have to stand up and volunteer. We all have to help. Um, that just makes the world a better place, and we need it to be a better place. So, thank you, so much. We've been hearing about energizer bunnies, compassionate people, and humanitarian. You know, speaker exemplifies all of these traits. Um, it is my privilege to introduce to you today, tonight, um, our keynote speaker. <laughs> 
Okay, would she make her way to the stage, please? Dr. Samira Ahmed. Big round of applause for Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Ahmed holds her doctorate in clinical psychology. She's a clinical assistant professor, and she is at Wayne State. She's the director of health. Um, she has many interests, academic interests, which include risk behaviors and protective factors for Muslim adolescents. She also promotes culturally and religiously meaningful psychotherapy, and she's a prolific writer. Um, she's she's co-editor of the book, Counseling Muslims, Handbook of Mental Health Issues and Interventions. She has spoken at the national level. She's been invited to the White House to present her work. She's been invited to Health and Human Services, and also the Department of Education. Um, she has been a grassroots community and national activist for more than 25 years. So she exemplifies the spirit of volunteerism we've been speaking about all night. Uh, without further ado, I welcome Dr. Samira Ahmed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل رد دم لساني يخفق قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته When I was asked to speak here tonight um, I was really humbled because growing up, even though I'm not from the Chicago land area, and I had relatives here, and beyond the fact that I have relatives here, this is a community that has been at the heart and forefront of so many good things. And so to be able to be here, not just attending, but to actually speak to all of you, many of you who are my elders, and have done so many amazing things, it's truly humbling. And I appreciate it, and Jazakallah Khair for inviting me tonight. Um, and then I was given the topic, and I had to chuckle a little bit. Because as I was looking at the to topic and what um, I was asked to speak about, um, I had to kind of remind myself about different things that have happened to me in life. Um, you know, just keep it real. I, and so part of that made me kind of laugh because I remember not too far ago, a few years back, I found myself in an interesting situation, much like most of you. And my kids had started school, my in-laws and my parents have started aging, and so changes have been happening for them. And my work started increasing, the demands. And as that all was happening, everybody wanted me, everybody needed me, and everything needed to be done last week. And one day in particular, I remember my, my eldest had started school and she needed help with homework. My toddler, she was 18 months, and I had to chase her around the room, trying to grab her, pin her down, and change her diaper. And at that moment, my middle, my middle child, who's four years and getting toilet trained, <laughs> yells, Mama, I'm done. And I'm thinking to myself, do I try to change the diaper? Or do I try to run after the one who, if I don't come right away, she's going to get up and run around the house. And which mess is worse for me to clean up? Yes. I hear chuckles. Some of you, many of you have gone through that time period or are currently going through that period. But as I was sitting there, and believe me, I was making the most sincerest of du'as. Because I was like, yeah, Allah, I don't know what to do right now. I am like stuck, all right? And as I was doing that, and after I kind of gained composure and took care of all that, um, I sat and I was reflecting. Because I was feeling so exhausted, so depleted, no energy left. And this, mind you, is the psychologist, 
the individual who has studied human behavior, health, mental health, you know, and doing all this research has been focused on Tabia for the last, you know, so many years. Here I am, just asking Allah, please help me get through the day. Right? And so, as I was reflecting on my situation, I realized that I wasn't exactly living the hadith of the Prophet And many of you know, know that hadith, in the man amalu bin niyat, right? Verily, actions are judged by intention. And it continues, and every person will get the reward he or she had intended for. Right? And as I reflected on that hadith, I was just thinking about what I was doing. I was in the rat race. I was just doing what needed to be done. I was just trying to keep up. But I wasn't making intentional choices related to what mattered to me. What were my values? What were my beliefs? Not just in terms of deen, but in terms of family values and beliefs. And I wasn't putting in the time and energy making those choices based on those beliefs and values. And so what I found myself was I was on autopilot, just doing what needed to be done, but not being intentional in my relationships. And so that's a question that I had to ask myself. Was I going to continue being on autopilot? Or was I going to be intentional and how I live my life, and how I develop my relationships. And truly, that's a question all of us here need to ask ourselves. You know, some of us may find that when we're talking to our spouse, we're talking about the grocery list. What do you need to get from the grocery? What errands need to be done? Where are the kids? How are they getting to where they have to go? We're talking about that. But where is the energy and the excitement in the relationship? the companionship, the happiness that we saw between the love of the Prophet وسلم, and his beloved wife. Right? Where is that? You know, today I spent the afternoon with many of the young people at the masjid. And I asked them, what stresses you out? You know what the majority of young people said? My parents. My parents stress me out. And I think of myself, I'm a parent. And I'm sure every single parent here loves their child and wants the best for their child. And yet, majority of our children are telling us that, I, that we, we parents, are a major source of their stress. SubhanAllah, what are we doing in our relationship that's causing us to distance ourselves from them? We need to think about it. What's going on? You know, we're all struggling with different situations, right? But we all have a choice. We can continue on autopilot or we can be intentional about our relationships, right? And let's be real. To change, to do something different than what we're already doing, it's not easy. And is it really worth the effort to make that change? Right? And this is where the Family and Youth Institute comes in, and this is what, what, we, what I do, is really understand what are the challenges facing our family. And it was founded to do research in this area, and I want to share a couple stats of, based on the research that we did. What we found is our marriages are suffering. We're no different than the rest of the community. One in three marriages, Muslim marriages, end up in getting divorced. Now, there is a time and place for divorce, and you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it halal, and that's, you know, we need to acknowledge that sometimes it's better to get a divorce. But to remember the pain, the hurt, the impact of families, a lot of that could have been prevented 
with some preliminary education. <coughs> we know from the research that of, uh, that of the 80% of Muslim couple, of the people who did get a divorce, 80% of those individuals never obtain premarriage education. And of the individuals who did get marriage ed premarriage education, nine out of 10 of those individuals did not get a divorce. Okay? So intentional, really important for us to really think about our relationships and how does that impact us. When we think about our kids, oops, our kids are suffering too. We know that one in two college, uh, Muslim college students drink alcohol and have drank alcohol in the past year. And of those young people who drank alcohol, one in four of them say, look, Islam is important to me. My religion matters. So what we, what, we're, what we realize is they matter, they care, and yet they're stuck. We, they need help navigating their, their realities. And what we also find is 70% of those started drinking alcohol when they were at home, in middle school and high school. When we were chauffeuring them from place to place. When we were making sure food was nice and hot and warm. When we were thinking that they were doing homework, we were doing all the stuff. But were we really there? Were we connected to them? Because one of the biggest protective factors that we see is a parent-child relationship. If that is strong, that can help them navigate through that process. But like I said, our kids were telling us this afternoon, my kid parents stress me out. They don't understand me. They don't listen to me. They don't know my reality. The next thing we also see with our children is that more than half of Muslim college students, kids who were born in Muslim families, are engaging in intimacy outside of marriage. Right? And of those who choose not to do so, Half of them thought about it. Half of them thought about that. The pressure is real. They're struggling. And the question is, are we there for them? We're too embarrassed to talk about all these issues. We don't know how to. They're getting their sex education from school, not their parents, not their masjid. How are they going to learn what's appropriate, what's not appropriate? Right? So these are the things that they're struggling with. And then the other thing is we don't realize is there's really no gender difference. Young men and young women are struggling with the same issues. And the question is, what are we doing about it? You're having this fundraising dinner tonight, you're having this dinner tonight and people are gathered, please give, masjid to, give money to your masjid. The masjid is important to help connect young people to the, to the masjid so they have alternatives, so they have programming to help, you, help your children. The masjid needs to be vibrant, active, youth-centered. We need to have that or else our kids are going to continue struggling. And some of you may have questions about the research. And I, I granted there are probably a lot of you in the, who have questions. All of this has gone through the scientific process, you know, peer reviewed, presented at academic conference, all of that, and all of that information is on our website. So for those of you who are interested in the methodology and all that, I encourage you to please go to our website and it has all that information. But the question I, I have for all of us is what is the point of sharing this data? What are we going to do with this information? The research that FY has done is really to highlight the choice that you and I have. We have a choice that we need to make, and that is, do we want to be intentional in what we do 
and how we live our lives and how we want to nurture our families? Or are we going to continue in autopilot? Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change a condition of a people until we change what is within ourselves. If we choose to be intentional and improve our relationship within our family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it easy and he's going, to, he's going to change it. But we need to do the effort. We need to pay attention. We need to know what's going on in our families. And this begins with ourselves. We need to reflect on our mental health. Are we stressed? Are we distracted? Are we intentional in how we're living our lives? We say family is important, but is that reflected in our time and what we do and who we do it with? These are questions. You know, what are each other's needs? N not just yourself, but what is the reality of your children? What is the reality of your spouse? What are their needs? What are they struggling with? You know, each one of us is struggling with different issues. And what we really want to do at the Family Youth Institute is help you deal with those issues. And so some of the things that we can do to help you is give you ideas. You know, many of us, we love our kids. We want to love, we want them to show our love, but we don't know how to. We don't know how the bonding, how we can do the bonding. And so we share those ideas with you. We send emails out on a daily basis, giving you ideas. Like last Friday, we sent out ideas of what you can do with a board game and how you can do, have what nice walks. And all of that is, how can I bond with my family? You know, some of us, we're struggling with social media. You know, what do we do with our kids and how do we do it and how do I understand all this? And my kid is saying, everybody has it. Well, what, what does it look like? What do we do? Again, we want to help you. We want to give you these resources of how to set boundaries, how to communicate about these issues. Where can you go for these resources? We're putting that together, right? And the idea is collectively we all have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to put in the time and effort into your family. I have a responsibility to help produce tools and resources for you to use. The community has a responsibility, the masjid, to foster this. And we need to make du'a. We need to make du'a for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to help us in those, in, in able to get and strengthen our families so that we're, we're not going to continue to struggle. And I want you to make sure that if you have any needs, you have any resources, please make sure to get that and ask us for that because we're here to serve you. We're here to strengthen the family because it's a team effort. It takes a village to raise a child. And our children are precious. Our families are precious. Our elders are precious. Our elders are struggling. They're struggling with mental health issues. Our kids are struggling with mental health issues. We can't tell the difference of what's the difference between elders and younger, what, what does it look like? Again, we need that knowledge to help them do that process. And navigating through all this is not easy. Building strong, confident families, it's hard work. And it's a lot of effort. But do we really have a choice? Can we let our kids, our parents, our relationships continue on autopilot? We want to have marriages like the Prophet وسلم, in Khadija radiallahu anha. The love that he had even after he, she had passed away. The excitement in hearing her sister's voice and honoring those she loved, the people, the things that she mattered to her, even after all these years, that love that was unshakable. I want that love, and I'm sure you want that love. When Fatima radiallahu anha would enter the room, the Prophet sallallahu would stand up and greet her with such happiness. 
I want that parent-child relationship between me and my child, and I'm sure you do too. All of this, that what I'm saying is, I want it, you want it. We all want it for our families, and that requires that effort. And we want to support you in that process. And I ask all of you to be intentional in your relationships with your family members, to really take the effort, invest in your family, invest in those around you, and use us, use the Family and Youth Institute to help you towards this effort. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the inner strength and desire to be intentional in our relationships. To be, and to provide us, he, all of us, with the skills, knowledge, and tools to be able to make the changes that are needed to build strong, connected, God-conscious families. I ask Allah subhanahu wa to equip us with the patience and perseverance and vision to keep us going even when the path is difficult, hard, and sometimes lonely. And finally, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and all of our families with Jannah and let each trial we experience be one step closer to Jannah. Jannah al firdaus Jazakallah khair. And I ask you to make dua for me and my family and for everyone here today. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed, for your very profound insights. Her talk was all about reminding us that we have choices. So I ask you all to intentionally choose to bid on the silent auction items we have on the back wall over there. And um, I'll ask Ali Qadri to come to the stage as well now. So help us choose to get to dinner faster by helping Ali with his fundraising so we can get you eating quicker. Assalamu alaikum. All right, so this is the fundraising part of the evening. I know everyone's jealous of me right now because I get to stand in between you and dinner, right? That's why we're all here. So I'll keep this brief. I, I know, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, we've had great reminders here and a lot of wonderful things have been shared. And really for us, the, the purpose of this evening, beyond collecting funds to keep the organization going, to be able to do counseling, to be able to do zakat, to be able to have a masjid and facilities for us to utilize, is to be able to bring the community together, right? It's a community to, to, together that will stand together, that will raise funds together, that will raise its children together. This is really what our community is about. And I think if we didn't raise funds, the fact that we came here, sat together, and were cordial and nice, and have bought that unity in our families and with each other, that would be a successful evening for me. But I'm not the one that's paying the bills, so. I have to tell you guys, our goal this evening is a million dollars. You think we can hit it? Inshallah? No, okay, there is no goal. So it's to remind you that to, to give what you can. We have some pledge forms on the table, so please grab it. Put anything on there. So our uncle said even if you put a dollar on there, we'll take it. You know, this is a dollar that goes towards bringing things to the message that we didn't have before and gives us a better structure to be able to provide future things that we need. Dr. Samira reminded us of some very, very relevant things for our families. And if you don't think it's relevant for us here at MCC, I will tell you you're wrong. I'm a counselor here at MCC and MEC, and I do community counseling. And I see the problems that we have here. They're very, very, very similar to everything Dr. Samira said. Our own children in our own families. And we have to be able to acknowledge that this is something that happens. But with having more funds, with having more programs, inshallah, we'll have the ability to be able to go further and to take our organization further. So please try to put anything down on that piece of paper, whatever it might be, uh, and, and take a moment and do that. Also, Dr. Rasha, she 
alluded to the silent auction that's happening in the back. If you haven't seen it, there's wonderful artwork there. Just go and put anything down there. And the highest bidder gets a wonderful ayat of kursi or alhamdulillah frame that they can put up. And why we're here is to be able to be thankful, right? Alhamdulillah, praise Allah that we have the ability to do all of this. I also need to take a moment and thank our gold sponsors that we have here this evening. Uh, without them, you know, it, it'd be hard to be able to put all of this together and we'd have more fundraising to do. So I'd like to acknowledge Iman Funds, Helping Hands, and Sahara Home Healthcare. And their representatives are outside, so please do take a moment and, and, and visit them on your way out. So I did say I'll keep this short, and I did say I'll keep it fun. So, oh, Ifanka, sorry, I missed I, I, Ifanka, wasn't on my list, but they're also a gold sponsor. Okay, going back to the fun part of this evening. I'm gonna wrap up, we have credit card readers out there, so if you have no cash, we also have a credit card reader, Brother Arif is there. Uh, please, uh, you know, Brother Arif is gonna go around the tables, put anything you can. This evening isn't about a certain goal, it's just about us coming together, having dinner, and giving to the organization so we can give back more. So please don't let that deter you from doing it. I can stay up here a lot longer, but I'm gonna put my trust in all of you that you all put down at least a dollar, at least a dollar, you know? Anything you can, even if it's ongoing. So the fun part of this evening is, under a chair on every single table, we have a Starbucks gift card. So everyone can reach under your table, uh, under your chair, and there's a winner on every single table. So reach under your chair, see if you are the lucky winner, and inshallah you have the ability to drink some coffee for the next couple of days, or at least one time. I don't know how much is on there, but <laughs> hopefully you're the lucky winner. So that's what that's it. I wanted to keep it brief. I know this is what everyone wants is the dinner. So inshallah, I'm gonna give a pause here. I'm gonna ask Dr. Russia, do you wanna come back and have dinner or should I just have them do it? Okay, so, all right, one, one more announcement before we go. Dr. Ahmed just wanted me to make a quick plug. So her youth leadership program, excuse me, her youth program and institute, there are sign-up sheets at the back exit doors. If anybody is interested in her services, you can sign up at the back, but otherwise everybody, dinner buffet tables are on your far right and on your far left. Please enjoy.